Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai. I am at Achara's place right now, and so I'm just shooting this on my phone, a quick, candid thing. I wanted to share some of my immediate thoughts. I watched the One More Thing video from Apple talking about their new M1 chip, the new silicone that they're putting into their uh, Mac Mini, their MacBook Pro, and their uh, which were the MacBook Air. And so I didn't watch the entire thing. I was watching it at two times speed just to ingest the information as much as possible about the silicone itself, about the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro. And I gotta say, I'm really excited. I looked at the shop just to see what the options were, and it's different now. And it's got me wondering, for me, as someone who edits with Premiere, how that's going to affect me, because my impulse was to go and get the Mac Mini. Uh, right now, I have a uh, iMac Pro as my main station, and my secondary station is a MacBook Pro that is being used as a desktop. And uh, I want to not do that anymore. I'm ruining the battery in that machine. And so my instant thought was, let me get a Mac Mini and replace the MacBook Pro there. So I can use my MacBook Pro as a mobile desktop again, as a mobile machine. And when I looked at the specs, they're different. They still offer you the option to get the Intel if you like, but it's more expensive than the Apple all baked in thing. And it's just very interesting because if you select the new Apple technology, everything is housed onto the same chip. It's all integrated. And so you have your CPU, your GPU, and your RAM all on the same architecture, which is fascinating, but I seriously doubt that Adobe has caught up to that. And I noticed in their presentation, they didn't mention Adobe. They have mentioned Adobe in the past a number of times, but this time they didn't. And Adobe is usually behind. For whatever reason, Adobe and Apple don't get along, uh, at least not publicly, like, or, or, or rather behind the scenes, I should say. There was an instance where I was having an issue editing some video of mine, with Adobe, where I was getting color changes. And it was like the same angle with the same exact lighting where the color contrast would shift dramatically. And I wasn't doing anything different in my shots. If you look at the raw video, it all looks the same. And it was just within Premiere on the iMac Pro that this was changing. And uh, I actually talked to Adobe support. It turned out it was a guy in India and he was a fan of mine. And so, he who's very frank with me and he goes, look, man, I want to help you out, but it's it's an internal Mac thing. Like they, they don't like Adobe. It was something like that. I, I don't I don't remember the whole conversation. I just remember there was like literally nothing I could do to fix the problem. And it, was, it had something to do with Apple and Mac, uh, uh, Adobe and Mac not getting along. And I think that's because Apple wanted to focus on selling, you know, Final Cut Studio and all that stuff. But they did mention DaVinci. And so they're friends with the DaVinci. Uh, they mentioned DaVinci in their in their One More Thing presentation. Anyway, I'm excited nonetheless. I love new technology. I love where this is going. The, the fascinating thing about what's available in the store is it's less RAM than if you've got the Intel counterpart. But I think that's okay because you don't need as much RAM. That's the whole thing with the phones. It's like a lot of these tech reviewers will often say like, oh, the, the, the new iPhone has this much RAM or this much whatever. But because it's all integrated and it's all you know, one house making everything, you don't necessarily need as much horsepower to do tasks more efficiently and more powerfully. And that's what's going on here, is they're offering you less RAM and, and less whatever, but it conceivably will be uh, as powerful, if not more powerful. I mean, that's what the charts that they're showing you. The assumption is that it'll be more powerful, like three times as powerful. Who knows? You, you just don't know until you get your hands on it. And if the stuff you're trying to do is optimized for it, then it'll all work out great. Because those charts are charts are all, you know, they're great and all. But until you use, you're use, you using it and you're using it for your own personal use and the things that you do, like I use Premiere a lot, you have no idea how it's going to play out. I mean, it might be worse. It might be significantly worse. That's the only thing holding me back right now from buying a Mac Mini is the possibility that Adobe is not going to catch up for like a year and it's going to be garbage until then. So I'm going to stick with my MacBook Pro, which is very, very capable. It's a 16 inch MacBook Pro as my secondary desktop for now and hope for the best. Uh, I'm still very excited for, you know, the possibilities, the possibilities of being able to, they mentioned in their presentation how the MacBook Air can now edit 4K, I believe they said, and there's no fan inside. Like, that's bananas. And obviously, you know, it coming from the same technology they've been already using for a long time, like this phone I'm recording on or on the iPad where you can already edit video, 
And there's no fan inside this phone. There's no fan inside the iPad. And it's very capable of editing and whatnot. I think this is fantastic. I'm very excited to see where this technology goes. And I can't wait to get my hands on it myself. I don't know when I'm going to buy it just because I've already got everything I need. And it is working. So it's hard to justify these purchases. They're quite expensive. However, however, because everything's coming from the same house, I noticed that this new tech is actually cheaper than I was expecting. That's what's so cool because, for instance, with the MacBook Pro, you're not paying Intel, you're not paying AMD, you're not paying NVIDIA, you're not paying anyone else for everything because it's all being made in-house now. So you can drive down the cost of your own stuff and make it competitive while making it more powerful than the competition. So this is fantastic. I'm hoping that Apple continues this trend because when I loaded up the MacBook Pro 13-inch, which conceivably is as powerful as my 16-inch MacBook Pro, um, it, the cost was not anywhere near as, as bloated as I thought it was going to be. It was a t I, I loaded up to 2 terabytes and, uh, you know, maximum whatever, 16 gigabytes of RAM because that's the max that they allow you. And it was about $2,200, I think, which I was surprised because it's Apple. Like Apple, you're thinking, oh, it's going to be like insane. It's going to be like three grand or whatever, but it was actually reasonably priced. So I think that what Apple's doing here is actually very smart. And um, even the Mac Mini, that's the thing I was looking at. I maxed it out. It wasn't anywhere near as much as I, I think it was. It came out to like $1,600 maxed out, if I'm not mistaken. $1,600 is nothing to sneeze at, okay, granted. However, when I loaded it up before, before this new tech dropped with um, the Intel counterpart and all that stuff, it was a lot more money. However, I was looking at it with the possibility of, I think, adding in 64 gigabytes of RAM and all that stuff. But I suppose not needing as much, you don't need to spend as much money. You can get it with 16 gigabytes of RAM and conceivably it'll be very efficient to the point that it is equivalent to the power or more, <laughs> they're touting even more powerful than if you were to get the same machine, Intel based with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So I think this is fantastic what they're doing here. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous because uh, I, I just got my MacBook Pro not that long ago, I think in, uh, what was it, summer? Did I get it in the summer of last year, yeah, do you think? So. Or I forget when I got it exactly, but I got it not that long ago. I like it a lot. Uh, and it actually handles that, that uh, problem I was talking about earlier where I have that color shift and contrast when I'm editing on my iMac Pro. I don't experience that on my MacBook Pro. Don't know why. Don't know what that's about. So whenever you see on this channel me drop one of those videos for uh, a brand deal, uh, like we just recently put out the Nick King video. It's Nick King, right? Zach. Zach King, sorry. Nick King is, some, is a friend of mine. Zach King. Uh, we, at the beginning of the video, we put a brand deal on it. That was shot on the Canon R5 and the Canon R. And typically that footage will shift contrast in a very bad way. If you look at previous brand deal videos I put out, you'll notice that kind of thing and me trying to correct it. So all those videos are edited on the MacBook Pro because it doesn't experience that issue for whatever reason. Um, I'm jealous because the new MacBook Pro 13 inch is conceivably more powerful than my 16 inch MacBook Pro and way cheaper, way cheaper. Don't get as much... Uh, uh, what do you call it? memory in there? Like I have six or eight terabytes of memory. Yeah, I think the max you get on the MacBook Pro 13 inches, two terabytes, but still like you can get external drives and it's powerful. It's very exciting um, because if you're able to do all that stuff with a MacBook Air with no cooling at all, then you add in the cooling capabilities of the Mac mini or the cooling capabilities of the MacBook Pro and you can drive it even further. I mean, this is so cool. Uh, I, I, I hope that the, I hope it really scales up when it comes to like the iMac, the iMac Pro or the larger MacBook Pro. I'm really, really hoping it scales up dramatically because then, man, it's going to be a beast. It's going to knock everything out of the water. Uh, I mean, it's going to blow the comp competition out of the water. So let me know you guys' feelings about this. I'm very excited and looking forward to it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to actually purchase this stuff because like I said, it's like, I don't need to buy this stuff right now, but I am looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, let me know your feelings and your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out and listening to me rant. I'm Jabby Kuei. Peace out.